I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All The Mods 9, and today we automate casings from Create, automate precision mechanisms, and get ourselves a Mega SU Generator. Hopefully you guys are ready. Now jumping back into some more All The Mods 9, today's gonna be a little bit interesting as we are going to dive a little bit into the Create mod. And we're gonna set up automations for casings and all kinds of stuff, including getting our self power set up for these stars that you see behind me. Well, and also getting them into the actual stars that they're supposed to be. Now I know, create can seem very daunting at first, but I promise you, I'm gonna walk you through some of the steps that uh, will make automation easy, especially in this pack. Now, something to note, everything that I do here with refined storage, you can also do if you started with applied energistics. All of this stuff works just the same. Now, let's take a look at the create mod. There's a lot of stuff going on here. And uh, yes, it does appear to be kind of overwhelming. And it has been for me over the last couple of years of trying to learn this mod. But I have recently been playing a pretty advanced mod pack called Create Arcane Engineering. And I've been playing that over on my Twitch. If you haven't checked that out, twitch.tv forward slash chosen architect, you know, just got to plug that right there. But I have been learning a ton about create. And so I'm going to put all of those things to use. Now, thankfully, at this point of our playthrough, we can kind of bypass most of the grindy part that uh, create unfortunately has. Um, and that is that it has its own built in progression line technically where you would be required to, for example, if you wanted to make a rotational speed controller, you would have to first obtain brass, and then you would need to craft a precision mechanism with this right here, which is called sequenced assembly. Um, now, there's also some other things that you would need access to, um, and that's, for example, the mechanical crafters, right? And these have their own progression line associated with them as well. Now, because we already have access to brass, we should be pretty darn good here. We even have access to being able to create plates. And uh, these right here, if you were making them with just create alone, would have to set up a press and all kinds of stuff to be able to make these. But we can simply make these and plates for any other material with the uh, thermal that we have already set up, which are being made up here inside of a, uh, a multi-servo press. But there are some things that we can't automate outside of Create that we definitely need to do, and that is precision mechanisms. Now, we're going to have to make some precision mechanisms, and these are actually required through for the Aldemod Star, because we need to make mechanical arms, at least 18 of these, and these are pretty simple and straightforward to create. However, like I said, we do need precision mechanisms for them. We also need casings, and casings are another thing that we cannot automate, really, outside of create itself now another nice thing that we can kind of bypass and that is the sanding of rose quartz by simply putting this into an enrichment chamber so this is going to make this a lot easier um having this inside of an enrichment chamber oh that that just kind of makes this go so much faster all right so now you're probably tired of me explaining let's go ahead and get this thing set up and got, dive into create so we're going to take some blaze burners and i'm just going to right click on the spawner you can capture blazes directly or you can just right click on a blaze spawner and that also gives you blaze burners now we're going to convert these blaze burners into liquid uh fueled burners these are going to be pretty interesting um and we do that with the use of a straw but we currently don't have any stress units so we're going to have to manually do this process let me show you now to be able to convert these into fuel blaze burners we need straws and to be able to get straws we can do this from the create crafts and additions rolling mill and we just need to put bamboo into the rolling mill and then that will convert it. Now, we don't have enough stress to be able to use a hand crank, which is the manualist of manual ways of actually get, generating stress. Uh, so instead, we're gonna have to use a couple of water wheels. Um, these should produce 256 SU each, and I'm currently using engineer's goggles to be able to see how much of that energy we're generating. And believe it or not, they have made water wheels so easy in this particular version. Um, so this is the newer version, for example, of the Create. And I will say, by far, one of the easiest ways to generate any sort of stress is just by literally clearing out two blocks and just allowing flowing water to flow onto this. And you will see this is now starting to process and we will start to see straws build up. And this is the earliest of early sort of early game SU generation. Now at our current stage, this is really all we need of this like water-based stress unit generation. 
because we're about to use water turning into steam and then using that steam to actually generate pressure. But it's a lot more simple than that. It sounds complicated, but I promise it's not. Now, I also want to make this look good. So right here in the center, I have cleared this area out in between our two star productions, which are also going to need create stress units in order to spin and operate. And so right in the center, I want this engine to be a centerpiece um, and not be just covered up. I want it to be a centerpiece and I want it to go right here. So let's place down some blaze burners. And by default, they're not going to do anything until we put straws on them. Now, normally you just right click these with some sort of burnable fuel source or a lava bucket, but we are going to send liquid lava directly to them. And notice when we do this, these guys end up getting a nice little drinking cap, which is just hilarious. And I love this. Now, around the sides for now, uh, this is why I haven't decorated just yet, is because I want to actually use some create building materials, which we're going to need this setup up and running before we can even do that. Um, I want to I want to just kind of get access to these down here uh, because we're going to need to hook up our lava access directly to the bottom of these guys. So let's get that set up. Now to make this simple, I'm just going to place down my ender tank that has access to my lava and I'm just going to use my universal pipe just because of the color, honestly, but uh, you could use a regular fluid pipe or honestly any fluid pipe from any mod. And uh, then I can actually grab my create wrench and believe it or not, these pipes also allow you to work with the create wrench and we don't even need upgrades on this. It should just work regardless of the uh, the pipe upgrades. These don't really need a whole lot of lava. So now we essentially have heated blaze burners. Now these do have another tier they go up to superheated. Those do require blaze cakes, but at this point we don't really need those. All we need now is to get our boiler up and running and get water sent to it. Now, my goal here is to make a level nine boiler, steam engine, whatever you want to call it. Uh, to do this, we just need to place down three by three of tanks. Really only need 45 tanks for this to work, but it's going to be a three by three and then five tall. And so we should be able to reach that five just like so. And if we put a steam engine on here, we can see exactly the tier we're currently at, judging by those little green dashes that you see there. Um, so because our max heat only goes up to nine, our size goes a little bit over, but that's not a huge deal. Whenever we put the water in here, we're going to realize the heat is going to be the limiting factor in that we don't have these superheated. And so a nine by nine, like a, a tier nine is more than fine. Um, this is going to be way more than we're ever going to use, I think. Um, and so we need to figure out where we're going to put our steam engines because we got to fit nine of them on here. Now, I think this actually looks pretty good. So we have three here, three here, and we have three on the back here. Now, we don't have the room for them over here, but if we really wanted to, we could, for example, take these and just to make them look kind of cool, put them kind of zigzag like this. Essentially, though, every single one of these steam engines are going to be connected to one central location. Now to make these look correct, well, we need to put in our shafts. And so as soon as we put the shafts in, then you're really gonna start to see this come together and you'll figure out now, oh, this actually looks pretty darn cool, right? These things sticking out actually look pretty neat. You know what, just to make it a little bit cleaner, I went ahead and just moved them onto this backside and leaving this nice and clean on the face. Uh, but it's all going to still work the exact same way. I'm going to go ahead and break these blocks here because this is where we're going to technically chain the power together. Now you can rotate the direction of these shafts technically by simply using your wrench. The wrench is just used for so many things. Now I want to get power going into the top. And so I am going to use a sink, but I'm going to kind of hide it up into the ceiling. So you don't really see the sink up here. But yes, we will have our infinite water source because that's the one thing this also needs is going to be water. Um, so we gotta figure out how much this is going to need and what upgrade we're gonna need to sort of maximize everything. And by default, if I was to just go ahead and do this, we're gonna see that we don't have enough water. So I'm gonna go ahead and try a diamond upgrade in here. Let's put an advanced upgrade uh, inside of the fluid section. There we go. And now we have plenty of water. Just, I bet the iron one would also be plenty of water. And you can see now our boiler status is at a level nine, producing 147,000 stress units via these nine engines total. That is a lot of stress, especially when you consider that this single water wheel right here at this slow speed produces 256 stress units. So yeah, you would need a lot of water wheels or the larger ones, which produce 512 
in order to reach this same capacity. I will say though, in my experience using the large water wheels, oh, just 64 of them produces over 32,000 stress units. And that is more than enough for many of the early game setups. And considering it's just some iron, some andesite and some wood, oh, it is phenomenal. Now, one of the most painful parts of Create, in my opinion, is this right here. Outside of the mod being fantastic, this manual process is one of the first ones that you probably want to get done as soon as possible. And that is by placing logs, and then technically you would need to strip all of them and then place andesite alloy onto them manually. There is actually a way to automate this. And this process is pretty darn tedious. But if we get this thing set up and automated, we never have to worry about it again. And we only need two, technically two create machines in order to fully automate this process. Well, let's talk about how to actually set this up. And well, because we have other tools available to us, it does make this setup really nice and small. But I'm gonna show you a couple of ways that we can move stress around. For example, right here, I'm using gearboxes. I have gearboxes sort of assigned so we can get kind of stress flowing throughout this area. And what I'm doing here is I'm sending stress over to a mechanical saw and we have a belt and then we have a deployer. Now the deployer is what's going to make our casing. So first of all, we need to strip the logs and we can do that with our saw right here. It technically should be stripped. Now I am looking at this and we might have to set the recipe because by default, there may be some other recipes. So we're gonna need a stripped variant of the wood place it in the filter slot, and then it should go through. But this saw is a little bit weird. The saw requires the opposite spinning to go in the direction you want. So for example, if I want this saw to send to this belt, well, it needs to be spinning the opposite direction, which means it needs to be going counterclockwise instead of clockwise in its rotation. Um, the best way to sort of demonstrate that would be extend the, extending this out and then adding some stress here. So if we get a belt, let's go ahead and make a couple of belts. Um, and then all we have to do is add this and then that will send the rotation. And we notice this is spinning counterclockwise, which means that if we send a log through here, it should go in the right direction. Perfect. But we also noticed it did not generate the material that we actually wanted, um, which is kind of unfortunate. So let's see if I can't force that to happen. So if I go ahead and strip this log, I should be able to place that in this filter slot. And now if I put a spruce log through this, we should notice now it actually produces the stripped bypassing any of the other crafting recipes. Now, another way that we can send rotation while also keeping the same rotation direction, but inverting it, well, we can do that by using a cog wheel. So if we place a cogwheel here and we place one here, we'll notice this is now spinning the belt in the direction that we want it to go. Um, and so that is just one many, one of many ways that we can uh, change direction. Now, another cool way is by using an encased chain drive. Now, this is going to keep the direction, but allow us to do some other interesting things. So let's go ahead and get power up to our deployer. And so if we place a chain drive, this is going to spin in the same direction but we can sort of change the direction that it is going. So notice it is getting the power, the stress over here, but this has now rotated. So we now have access to it on the opposite direction. That's pretty darn cool. And uh, we can continue that up and we can keep changing that direction. And notice this is carrying that signal all the way through in case chain drives are very powerful for this reason. Man, I couldn't come up with any better way of showing how you can utilize all of these mechanics to rotate different machines. Now, another way that we can get things onto machines and off the belts and onto belts is by using different funnels. Um, and the funnels do have the direction they are facing. If you just right click on them, they're going to place in the uh, exporting direction. And if you shift right click, it's going to be in the insertion direction. Um, but if you ever wanna rotate this and change it, you can just use your wrench and right click. But we want this to pull out the wood and send it onto here to be turned into the plank. And then we want it, or the strip log, and then we want that to run down here. And then we want the deployer to send out the item that is going to click, and then we want it to go in. And it should work in this order without any kind of filter. And then this right here prevents items from just getting sent off of the belt. You can actually block your belt lines and sort of cram your belt lines if you place, for example, a solid block or a trap door in this case, on the outer edge, preventing the items from just getting simply shot off the side, 
which it will do if nothing is there. Now, because I'm gonna be sending my items directly into here with an auto crafter from like for refined storage, we are gonna be sending two different items. We're gonna send the log, which is gonna get sent here. So instead of an andesite funnel here, I kind of want to filter so we don't actually send the wrong material here. So what I wanna do is use a brass funnel instead. And the brass funnel is going to make sure that we only ever send the thing that we have in the filter slot. And you can also filter, for example, with filter cards from Create as well. Um, so we can say, let's grab some spruce logs and we'll say, hey, only send spruce logs out of this chest and onto this belt. Um, everything else, we can go ahead and filter with a pipe. I'm going to filter that and send it into here. Um, now, you could use Create Mechanics. I have automated the same setup without using pipes, but I just want to use pipes here just to make things a little simpler since we have them available. So underneath the items, we're going to put under here the advanced item pipes, and then we're going to need to add some things to a filter. So um, we have a bunch of different casings, right? So if we go to Create and Casings, we'll see we have Andesite, we have Brass, we have Copper, and we have Train Casings. All of these require different things, so let's first do the alloy. So we can do the andesite alloy. That's one item that needs to be in this only filter. Um, needs to be under whitelist mode. And then we need brass. That allows us to make brass casings. And that is the ingots, by the way. So there is the brass ingots. And then we can go ahead and send over the copper. And for right now, that's it because we're not really worrying about trains. Now I do want this whole area to sort of have this, um, this brass vibe. So you can actually, without even using the casings, you can cover all of these things with this brass casing, uh, which is pretty darn cool. Now, these gearboxes, I think there are brass gearboxes. Uh, maybe not. I, I think Create Deco adds that, and I don't know if that is in here. Uh, but I guess we'll have these andesite. We actually might do andesite sort of in the center with everything else being on the outside. But notice it's not actually consuming these, and that's the same for all of these casings. And to get the casings off, well, you just simply should be able to shift right click with your wrench, and that will actually remove it. And this can also be done to cogs, just like you see here. And also belts. Now it is kind of mind boggling how complex this actually looks, even though in reality, it's not that crazy to set up. But I am saying that with years of experience in this mod, so I guess that makes sense. Now setting up the pattern, we need to go under processing here and we're gonna say send one spruce log with, for example, let's do andesite, right? With one andesite, and that is gonna produce one andesite casing. And that is going to be our casing process that is going to happen for each of these. So we're just, we'll just swap these out. And this is for the brass. And then swap this one out. And that is for the copper casing. And there we go. That is essentially all we need for casing automation. And it is set up and ready to go for us to continue our adventure. So with all of this inside of our crafter and with this running at its base speed without us speeding anything up just yet, um, we can go ahead and start to craft this. So let's craft, for example, 64 brass casings. And so what should happen is we receive our brass. It gets placed inside of here. So we have our brass that's going in. And then we should be receiving our logs, which should be getting sent out of here, if all is well. I don't know why it's not being sent out just yet, but it should be getting sent out onto the belt. The first one at least operated. And we have spruce logs, and spruce logs is set in the filter. Interestingly enough, though, it's not actually sending out just yet. Maybe it's because this is uh, updating, and because of that causing it not to send. That is kind of a weird bug, isn't it? So this right here is a good example of <laughs> different versions doing different things. And for some reason in this case, this funnel is not sending like it's supposed to. It's not locked or anything. Now I did figure out the problem. However, I did redesign this just a little bit, even though it is exactly the same sort of way. Um, the only thing that I did different was I just simply made these a little bit flatter so they weren't sticking out the face. But the issue that I was having is for some reason, the brass funnel, while it's not set in the appropriate mode, will try to send out 16 or, or as many as it can inside of here. So we actually have to limit it to one at a time to be able to go onto the saw, because uh, it just won't send one apparently, unless we set it to exactly one. And then it will go ahead and send all of these through. 
So there we go. So with that set, now everything should work as planned. You just have to make sure this is set to exactly one when going onto that saw. So this will work the same way that we just had it set up. However, I think this way is a little bit more visually appealing in my opinion. You can actually see it working and that's the fun of Create. Now the work on this area is really starting to look nice now that we have cases automated. However, there is still one thing that I can do to make things faster and that is to get precision mechanisms. While this is also required for the All the Mod Star, precision mechanisms are actually pretty nice. So let's take a look at the create and precision mechanisms, which by the way is used for the mechanical arm. And these are also utilized for the speed controller. Um, and the speed controller allows us to adjust our speeds and, and make them and set them to whatever we want, including changing rotation direction. Now, out of all of the setups, this one can seem the most daunting, but I'm going to show you a really simple way to set this up to make it, well, less daunting. And it's going to require three deployers. And that is basically it. Three deployers, kind of, because we also need ourselves a threshold switch. And I'm going to show you how to utilize a threshold switch in order to create this setup and make sure it never backs up on you. Now, if we break down this precision mechanism, we can take a look and see exactly what we're going to get here. So it does, however, tell us we're going to get some salvage, and this is only an 80% chance of actually completing. So instead of us creating auto crafting recipes for this, it might be best within refined storage to have these automatically produced up until a, th a certain amount. Um, so we can say always keep, for example, 64 of these in stock. And whenever that stock runs low, then we can start to craft some more. That would prevent some backing up. But if you were going to do a batch request, I do have a way that I'm going to set up that will actually show you how to make sure that no matter how many you set to schedule to craft, that it will never back up. This is going to need to repeat five times, doing these operations, pressing these five times. And you can use a belt here. It just shows deployers down here because I don't know if it can render out a belt line rotating down here. Um, so in this sort of setup, we just need to send the items through just a bunch of deployers. And that sounds fairly simple. However, we do need to loop it back around unless you set up a massive conveyor that has this operation happening five times, which is something you can totally do um but we can get it done actually in a much smaller space by just utilizing what you see here so i went ahead and placed in my belts and let's go ahead and get our deployers placed in and you can see right here this is um basically it but we need to create a loop now one of the best ways to actually loop around is to utilize item vaults um but they only work within a three wide area unless you make a rather large um, sort of uh, vault. Uh, but by default, these will span three blocks just like you see here. Now, the cool part about this is items that go into here, for example, in this direction, as soon as they go into here, they're accessible from any side instantaneously, meaning that we can then send the ingredient right back just like so. Now, because of the way these tunnels work, we're probably going to need to extend our belt one more out this way and one more out this way. And you can do that by just using a belt in your hand to extend it out. Now, because we can filter our brass here, this makes this a lot easier to sort of set up. We can just have ourselves the input. This is going to send our initial items here, and then it's going to go through here, and then it's going to pass by this. And if it hasn't completed, it's going to then get sent back around until it's finally completed, in which it will end up in this, which will be our output, right? This is where everything is going to end up going. Um, so the magic needs to happen in the rotation section here. Now, the way that I'm going to prevent this from backing up and making sure this item vault never receives too many items is by using a threshold switch. So with this threshold switch, we can actually detect how many items are inside of this vault. And the way it's going to work is this top bar is going to detect and say, hey, um, don't send a redstone signal until we've hit 75% of this container being filled and that is when it's going to then take this chest little icon and drop it down to this bar, thus emitting a redstone signal. And it's going to hold that redstone signal until this inventory drops below 25%. That's when it's then going to send the chest icon back up and thus no more a redstone signal, right? And then we can also invert this to make sure it sends a redstone signal um, until it uh, gets to a certain point and then it can turn the redstone signal off. Uh, but by default, I think this is going to work, right? Because what we want to do is when this fills up, for example, to 75%, which is fine um, by default, 
it should send a redstone signal to this funnel. And when you send a redstone signal to a funnel, it will actually lock the funnel. So with that funnel locked, which we'll be able to see a little bit clearer by expanding the funnel, we will then be able to see uh, that this will shut it off, meaning no more items can go back on the belt, leaving the remaining items to just continue looping, which is exactly what you would want. Out of all my time learning create, the threshold switch is by far one of the nicest items in the entire mod. Now let's go ahead and give this thing some power. So I am just simply sending some power through the bottom that's going up through the chain drive and driving this. This will be, of course, facaded. Um, and then through the back here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a belt that is going to go vertical because that's one of the best ways. I mean, I could use another chain drive, but I do like showing that you can definitely use belts and it's not a big deal. However, belts with items on them can get a little laggy, but this for this particular setup, it's not going to be a big deal. And you can see these are all now running. And now I just need to get my refined storage system to make sure we always keep those three items in stock up here. So with just some simple exporters here, we can set our cogwheel in here with a crafting card to make sure we have this automatically crafting into here and then an iron nugget and perfect. We now have all three of the required things needed to loop through and we need to make sure we have them in the correct order. Um, and so we do. So now's the moment of truth. We need to go ahead and get a few of these going and then we can set our filter. So this is going to start and you see that that is then looping around. Now this gives us an incomplete precision mechanism and I kind of want to set that into the filter and then if we send this back through we'll notice that it does loop back around and only the incomplete will end up going back through the initial loop and then the final product does enter into here and that's pretty important because that's really the only filter that we need to set up for this entire thing. It sounds crazy but that's really it. Um, even if this doesn't complete, it's going to send the remaining products over here. Um, like I said, there's an 80% chance. And so now we can get this running. And this is how simple this operation is. And like I said, if this item vault does fill up with more of these, it will make sure to shut off this funnel so it doesn't send any new products in. And then we should start receiving our precision mechanisms. And if there was any scrap, it would also go in the barrel. Now, I think for something like this, instead of just requesting it, I think it's going to be a lot safer for us to just use an exporter. However, like I said, the way I have it set up is protected, but we can go ahead and use a detector for this particular task. And if we place this next to our system, it will connect in. And all we have to do is say whenever we reach a very specific amount of precision mechanisms inside of our system, for example, 64, we can say emit a signal when above the amount um, or yeah, yeah, I, I would say emit a signal when above the amount. And if we set it to 63, for example, that would be 64 and then it'll emit a redstone signal here. And this will be set to only work with uh, yeah, only work without a redstone signal. So if it's set to only work without a redstone signal, when it receives a signal, it will stop. And so this will emit the signal when we go over the uh, 64 when we go over 63 precision mechanisms in here um, and then that essentially will work and so we just need to give it the things that it needs for example the gold plates and then we put a crafter card in here and that will make sure to keep the plates going and so we'll put the crafting card in here put the gold plates in and that should start sending all of the things in uh, and it should keep sending 64 but it's probably going to send a little bit over um, because of the uh, slow operation that this does. Um, so yeah, that is something that we're going to have to keep in mind. It is going to be a bit slower, uh, but this would also still stop because of the way we have this threshold switch set up. And we're just about to see that happen right here. So this is going to hit 75 and then it just switched off. And now we will no longer see the amount of, we'll no longer see these gold plates being sent out into this system here. Instead, this is going to nearly hit max and should stop sending plates. Yeah, and just like that, we now see that this is going to start finishing up those operations on all of those mechanisms. And then whenever they are fully complete, they're gonna enter here back into our system. And this is gonna remain locked until it drops below 25% full. 
Now, some other things that I can suggest doing is setting this to only send out one at a time, and then also putting a regulator upgrade in here to make sure that there's only one plate at a time inside of this barrel. That will also help limit the, uh, the amount that this all sends in, so you don't end up with an entire chest full of plates. Now, to speed all these processes up, we can use a rotational speed controller, and this is where things get a little bit wonky, right? Um, so if we want to speed up our initial setup, we could do it from the source. However, this does make it a little bit more challenging because of the way the rotational speed controller works. So uh, directly within create, the way this is going to function is it receives the power from the side, but then outputs it up here onto this cog. Um, and that causes a little bit of a, a weird thing to happen where the rotation is being sent into the side and now we have to change its direction from this side. Um, and we can use cogs and all kinds of stuff, but, uh, it, like I said, it just, it just makes things a little bit weird. Um, so what we can do here is we could potentially just receive the power directly from this shaft, um, that's running through the bottom. And if we receive the power that is coming from there, hopefully we can, let's see, let's drag this up. Perfect. Um, hopefully we can kind of manipulate this and send it back, for example, back into this. Um, so if I use a gearbox, because now we can actually just craft gearboxes on demand, Ooh, which is so nice. There we go. Um, we should be able to use this gearbox to change the rotation direction um, while also still using this encased chain drive to just send the power over. Um, but now we're going to send that into our rotational speed controller. Um, and I might actually place the rotational speed controller right here because we can hook a shaft up to this um, and then a shaft here, then a rotational, and then we can control the speed of this entire thing, making sure the belt is going the right way because right now it is not. Um, so to, to change the direction, we just flip it over and now the direction is now changed. Um, and then we just need to increase the speed. So to increase the speed of this whole setup, we just bring this bad boy all the way up to 256. And now this is really rocking and rolling. Um, so just to be able to see this all working at max speed, let's go ahead and take a look at our mechanisms. And if we pull out some mechanisms, this should jump start again. And now we see this thing really going mock speed. It is kind of ridiculous. And the same thing goes for this area back here. However, this does get a little bit more complicated because I extended my shaft through the middle and then I'm sending it with a uh, chain drive to send over into the rotational speed controller, but it will work. It just, you have to kind of manipulate it in a way that will allow it to work. And then I can go ahead and request, for example, some andesite casings. And now we'll actually see how fast this is. I think the big thing is just honestly, this being the limiting factor. Like, let's see, speed upgrades. Yeah, let's put some speed upgrades in this crafter. And then we can really start to see this thing going as fast as it possibly can. Now, I do want to move this whole setup back, and this is where having it selected with our cut tool from Dyer, oh, is just ridiculously powerful. Um, so it doesn't look like it takes our crafters and stuff, which is kind of interesting that it doesn't take the refined storage stuff, but it should let us, for example, paste this thing back in here and just sort of move this back. So let's see if I can get it into position. Um, we do have to, when we paste it in, modify the settings here um and let's see pull it forward and that looks like it's almost right where we want it right that looks pretty darn close and i think that is it right i don't want it that's where it was at it was right here yeah i think this is it let me right click and that should place everything in sort of yep and there it goes all i had to do was just connect a couple of belts and then just add the shaft and everything is rotating in the correct direction and everything kept its settings. So I went ahead and finished up the rest of the walls and kind of got this place looking pretty nice. And just went with a random piping pattern. Those are just for decorations up there. And um, yeah, I think the pipes make it look a little bit nicer. And all of these are going to eventually turn green. And that I think is going to have a really, really nice look on the inside of this place. So now that we've got all of this done, we can now make the crafters, but that's going to have to be it for today's episode. And hopefully you enjoyed learning how to set up and automate casings and precision mechanisms. And honestly, one of the easiest ways possible. And guys, I thank you so very much. If you did enjoy, click that subscribe button and also comment down below. What's your opinion on the create mod in general? I would love to hear from you and uh, love. Do you hate it? Do you love it? 
uh, just let me know. I would love to hear. And uh, guys, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that amazing thanks is going to go out to Nakagazi. I think I said that right. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord and becoming a Discord premium member and supporting me in one of the best ways possible. Oh goodness, I cannot wait to get this all the mods nine star crafted and get that B but it does take a little bit of preparation. So be sure to click that subscribe, like I had said, and I hope to see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.